My name is Kealoha Pau Ole Ahuna. Um, Kealoha Pau Ole is spelled K-E-A-L-O-H-A-P-A-U-Okina-O-L-E. -O Kumu is fine. Yeah, Kumu. Okay. Uh, to be able to have participated in Ahua Heinoa was, to me, a tremendous honor. Um, it was something that was unexpected as it was a byproduct of my participation in a professional development course um, titled Leoola. And, um, you know, in that course we looked at Hawaiian creation, uh, strengthening our understanding of Hawaii a Hawaiian worldview. And I think that was the perfect uh, prepare or something that was able to prepare us well to be able to go into Ahua Heinoa and look at these uh, interstellar objects, uh, the quasar and the, and the dwarf planet as well, and to be able to approach naming objects such as these um, in a manner that is consistent with both Hawaiian thinking and is appropriate for the object itself. Uh, as a kumu, being able to participate in Ahua Heinoa it allowed me to understand that, you know, a lot goes into the naming process and into anything that we do as educators. We need to do our due diligence and our research um, as we're going into any type of work, um, especially naming in Hawaiian culture because it holds such a significance. But the amount of research that was required to um, have been done beforehand, um, I think that was something that I'm able to take as an educator and take that knowledge and implement it into my own classroom as well for my students to take home. I definitely hope to collaborate on projects similar to Ahua Heinoa or if another opportunity comes up to participate in Ahua Heinoa again, I definitely um, jump at the opportunity just because of the, not just for the opportunity of being able to name uh, stellar objects such as those that were named, but to be able to collaborate with my colleagues across the state from various levels that teach, um, for example, from K through post high. Uh, being able to work with them, I think, was the most valuable experience uh, for me uh, during this Ahua Heinoa process. I think the first step to integrating culture and science is to look at what is being done currently in the Hawaiian uh, medium education system right now. I think they provide a great model for what is being done um, just because they don't limit disciplines as separate. Um, they integrate all types of disciplines into their lessons that they're doing. For example, at Navahi Okalani Opu'u, they're use, utilizing hoiva'a or ho'okeleva'a, navigating on a canoe to teach mathematics, to teach um, oceanography and marine science. And so I think that's a great step to look at, or a great uh, role model to, for the traditional educational system to look at. Larry Kimura, L-A-R-R-Y-K-I-M-U-R-A, -R -R uh, Associate Professor of Hawaiian Language at the College of Kahakaula Oke'elikolani College of Hawaiian Language, University of Hawaii at Hilo. Language is everywhere, so in our efforts to revitalize our language, from when uh, we started in this work of Hawaiian language re revitalization with our first immersion, uh, I call it Hawaiian medium preschools, the Punanaleo, that was back in 1983, uh, we are coming in, 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 in the uh, process of revitalizing something that's on the brink of extinction. And we know that language, as I said, is everywhere. And we need to bring our language, the Hawaiian language, to everything and everywhere. Uh, the lani, or the sky above us and the earth below us, is everywhere. So. It's a natural, I think, and it's a reconnection to what we were doing with our uh, naming of our celestial bodies from before. And of course, we have a lot of uh, documentations in what we call Ko'i Honua, or our creation chants of the Hawaiian universe that we're so fortunate to have today to use as 
supportive material and learning through the language. It's all in our language. And therefore, um, we have a rich resource uh, in our cultural, um, Hawaiian cultural identity. Yeah. It's not so much just that, you know, all of a sudden. You know, I think, uh, uh, however, uh, the way it came about was uh, more recently. But of course, the consciousness of our language being everywhere, as I mentioned, uh, up in the cosmos, down here on Earth, is natural. And we just need to get our language back into normalized use. Uh -huh. And we did this before, as I said, and uh, it can be substantiated very strongly by the fortunate uh, documentations that we still have with us today. And uh, we can use that to support all of our work for today, yes. I think our involvement with uh, revitalizing our Hawaiian language is a common story throughout the world, for, especially for indigenous peoples, because our languages have become, a, the endanger, become endangered and become a world crisis. And therefore, uh, we are all trying to do the best we can. And one of the might be a, a simple or maybe a small way, however I think it can lead to bigger things, is to name uh, objects such as what we were, we were doing before in the heavens and get back to that. And that will bring us back to being involved with uh, who we are, what we are, using our language and our cultural perspective on our world. Yes, I think our language can help us uh, uh, identify that we are still here and uh, make our place known to the world that way and that we can still be a part of what's going on in current times. And that's the whole idea of restoring the life to a language and a culture. So thank goodness for these kinds of opportunities that we can be a part of. And, you know, astronomy discoveries are great things for the astronomical world, but somehow it also hits the general layperson, you know, on the street as well. So it's far reaching. So as I said, thank goodness, we're appreciative to be a part of that. Yeah, I guess it's a great partnering and, uh, uh, and hopefully we can um, help our, our other indigenous peoples to get back to all of this uh, uh, energy, I call it, because it helps to revitalize. It gives you renewed life and hope for, uh, as I said, the crisis that most of our indigenous peoples are going through. And this is just one maybe a small way, but it could be a big way yes, to help. Well, it's the name Po Niu Ena is fitting mainly because I think it was composed by Hawaiian language immersion or Hawaiian medium teachers. And when I use those words, um, you, you know that we are in this process of reconnecting uh, using our language again in current times. So these are teachers who are teaching young students from kindergarten or preschool all the way up to 12th grade and beyond, in, even into our college. So it's, uh, it's, they, I know they have experienced something that maybe they never thought they would be engaged in. They're too busy doing so many other things that teachers have to do. But to be able to uh, have this experience that they can share with their students or among themselves. And so this name came out actually as a team effort of our 22 participants this past summer at our Leola uh, Hawaiian Language Teachers Workshop. And I think they thoroughly um, delved into it enjoyed it and was
pleasantly surprised that actually their group effort, it wasn't by one or two people, it was a group effort that produced this name, Po, meaning dark, endless, ceaseless power. And new is dizzy, dizzy, swirling, ah, uh, and uh, that creates this brilliance in the sky that is there that we have to go and look through a telescope to see, maybe, I don't know, like we just discovered with Povehi. So that's how this name came about. There was lots of thought. Uh, and of course, you can't put everything in. I know I didn't count 12 or 15 letters, but it's, I think, a beautiful name that they created. Thank you.